Hey guys, Old Guy Gaming here, back again for another MTG Arena video, and today we're going to continue our tour through the starter decks. Now, I've saved one of my favorites for the last, at least for the monocolored uh, decks, and this is Forest's Might, the solid green one. Uh, this deck should look somewhat familiar because it basically formed the skeleton for the first deck that I went on to build for standard, which is the mono green Stompy, which if I can figure out the annotation thing, will be up in the corner to kind of point you to how that one, this deck can get modified. But overall, this one I feel is one of the best decks of the starter decks and if you're going to start playing i'd either recommend this one or the red one to kind of get you started in mtg arena uh, so let's go over some of the cards that are in this one and if you saw my other videos this should look fairly familiar so you end up with two land of war elves in this one this is a stock standard uh mana dork helps you ramp up into some of these larger creatures and my preferred method of mana dorking and ramping uh, you also get two uh druid of the cows basically serving the same function as the land of war elves living in the two slot though uh, this one's a little bit tougher. Uh, it doesn't get uh, punked out by one damage spells, one damage creatures. Um, it's still susceptible to things like lightning strike like that, but they need to, it's it's safe from shocks and other two damage things. It's okay. Um, for me, I happen to like my mana dorks low into the ground and fast and, uh, fast and early, but she still works. She's still a fantastic card. Greenwood Sentinel is pretty good. Um, the 2-2 two -two with Vigilance, it's basically a 2-2 two -two bear, but it also gets the, the added benefit of Vigilance, being able to attack and block at the same time. Pretty good. Not that bad. Highland Game, um, I'm always iffy whenever it comes down to one toughness creatures in any instance, So because you know they're going to die, but at least when this one dies, he's kind enough to leave some 2 life behind. There is a little bit of life gain um, in this, but not a ton. Uh, Plummet. Plummet is one of those spells that I always find to be relatively useless if because it's super situational. If you're not facing a deck that doesn't have flying creatures, it's a dead card in your deck. Um, it does have its uses. Uh, this is an okay sideboard card or sideboard card if you really want to put it in. In this deck, you're going to find probably that this is going to come up and I'm never going to use it. Rabid Bite is a solid staple. Uh, I love this card. Uh, it's a fantastic spell. It allows you to be able to do direct damage to your creatures. Green's not really particularly known for direct damage spells, so this one allows you to pick off those pesky little creatures that are driving you crazy without doing any damage to your own. Titanic Growth uh, I fa reminds me of the old gi uh, giant growth spells from the original days of magic. Uh, for one more mana, you get an additional plus one, plus one. It's a great little combat trick. does come in, come, come in handy. Um, my original uh, Mono Green Snobby deck did have this one in for uh, the longest time uh, before I filled it out with some of the rares. Uh, it's simply uh, uh, it's a good little combat trick. It works out well for you. Verdant Rebirth, interesting card. If you have a creature that's going to die, it comes back to the, it comes back to your, uh, comes back, and you get to draw a card. That's a little bit of a card draw engine. This is probably going to be one of the first spells you drop off, but you you can find your use. Blanchwood Armor is one of the staples in my uh, Mono Green Stompy deck. Since you are running Mono Green, you're going to have a ton of forests. You're going to be making some relatively big creatures. You just need to find the right ones to take advantage of it. Centaur Corsair, uh, it's a uh, 3-3. Three, three. Uh, nothing super special. <laughs> nothing great. I mean, you might play it in a 3-drop. There are other better 3-drops. Uh, there's a ton of them. I don't know. Uh, let's start off with Steel Leaf Champion, Thrashing Bronthodon. There's a whole bunch of other better ones. So this is going to be another one of the cards. That, so you rotate out almost relatively quickly on this one. Um, yet another method for uh, helping you ramp is the Elvish Rejuvenator. Now, the, the benefit to this one is, is that um, this actually puts a land into play. So... Some of the downsides of having mana dorks is that they can be killed. They can kill by spells, they can be killed by other creatures. There are other methods of killing creatures. But lands, you don't see a ton of land destruction in Magic on e anymore. So the ability to be able to pull out a land and drop it in is fine. Every time I've cast this card, I end up pulling five straight creatures and never actually get to use the mana aspect to it. But hey, can't all be winners, right? Um, Bristling Boar, uh, can't attack, can't block, can't be blocked by more than one creature, which relatively says that they're going to find the biggest creature that can kill it and kill it. Um, but if you are going up against some low lighting, low riding creatures, the one ones, the two twos, he's, he's okay. One of my absolute favorite cards coming out of M19 was Gigantosaurus. Now, green is known for its particularly big creatures, and they've always been known for big creatures. Going back to the six cat casting cost, Crawl Worm from the old days of Magic Yore, to find a creature with a strength and toughness of 10 for only 5 mana is extraordinarily unusual. Um, the minute that I saw it, I attached myself to this card. It's one of those things that you're like, oh man, it's great, but I wish it did something more like had Trample or something along those lines. Because it can be, you know, you can just chump block it out. It's a, 
if you, they don't have anything to block it, though, he is a massive, a lot of much of fun. Again, going along with the uh, the two two with vigilance we saw, we have another five five with vigilance. This one's okay. Um, again, this is gonna be one of the other creatures you float, float out. But I mean, he's okay. He really is. Uh, aggressive mammoth. This is the all star of the welcome decks. If you don't know, in paper magic, you can go out and get a green core nineteen deck, and you will end up with one of these in the rare slots. I recommend getting two welcome decks so that you end up with two of these cards try to find the other one that's got green in it um this is what my son runs in his deck it's fantastic uh again going off the thing it's only six mana for an eight eight not only does it have trample awesome but then it gives every other creature like your buddy gigantosaurus trample as well um i have real difficulties not putting this card in my mono and green stompy decks to be honest with you because there are creatures like I don't know, the Nullhide Ferox, for example, that could really use Trample, and for a very measly cost of six mana, you can pull this guy out. Prodigious Growth, um, I think I played this <laughs> for a rare slot. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to lie. For six mana, you're bumping up a creature 7-7 seven, seven and giving it Trample. Again, you could drop that on your Gigantosaurus. Uh, it's a little pricey for what it does to me, for me, and then it's it's most likely going to be gone. And Meteor Golem, where would we be without Meteor Golem? Yeah. Uh, and Galta. So this is one of the things I love about this deck. It starts you off with a fantastic creature that will end up in more powerful decks. Galta is a pretty much a big staple in any green, uh, modern green deck. He's outstanding. You've got plenty of other creatures in here to lower that casting cost. You rarely will cast him for the full 12. And then, of course, 25 Forests. So let's go ahead and get some gameplay in with the Mono Green Forests Might. So, my mission today is to attack with creatures. So, running an aggro deck will... Oh! I've got to cancel. Can the cancel button work? Does it work? Does it work? <gasps> nope, didn't work. So, Tony Tebow is going to get a free conceit out of me because I did not want to play this game with that deck. Sad. <sighs> this is my modern green snoppy. This is what your green one goes eventually morphs into, to be honest with you. Uh, keep and then I will concede. He just got himself a free win. Congratulations. If I were a better YouTuber, I would edit that out, but no, I want you to see the fact that I make mistakes, and that was one of them. Plus, editing takes too long. <laughs> so let's try that again, and we are going to pick Forest's Might this time around and try again. I know some people prefer the drag method. I keep, I always read these little hubble loads. I know I've seen other YouTubers doing it too, where they prefer the drag method. Uh, I like the double click. Probably doesn't hurt that I spend a lot of mono decks. I mean, if you're doing multicolor decks, then maybe not doing it that way, manual, manually tapping your mana. Oh, there we go. Let's give that a try and see what happens. Be a nice gentleman and say hello. And drop my mana dork. I love the new artwork on this. It's really sharp. I will attack you with my land of war. Probably should have cast that. Oh well. Go my 3 3 in. My land of wars with knives, man. They're doing some damage. Mentor the Meek. I wonder if this is a life gain deck. This should be interesting. Uh, it got really interesting really fast. <laughs> Gigantosaurus. This is going to get amazing if I can get this down. I'm one mana away. And he quit. Oh my goodness. So as you can, I don't think I have a very good win-loss record. I should go back and look at it with the starter decks and how well they're doing. Um, the green one is really good. Not great, but really good. So I'll give you another. That one went way too quick, so I'm going to give you probably two games. And remember to take my banner off. I go first. Oh, there's so much to like here. 
Be a gentleman and say hello. Blanchwood, <laughs> Titanic, I'm an aggressive mammoth. <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. So is he playing? Is it? Is he playing Redburn? What's he got there? We're gonna do Drew to the cow. We need to ramp. He's got a shock in his hand. That's probably what it is. It's sitting there waiting for him to say, "Do you want to shock it?" No. Is he going to waste a lightning strike on it? Nope, guess not. This is hysterical. Uh, Highland game. I'm only attacking because my mission says I need to attack with creatures, but it's still kind of funny to be able to attack with a druid of the cow. Okay. I'll take the two life. Sure, thanks. Wouldn't mind something a little bit bigger than her, though. Gutter snipe. Uh, my next deck is really focused around that. Between that and lo uh, the... Uh, the coil, the, the O4 wall, that basically does the same exact ability except does one damage instead of two. Yeah, the entire deck is basically just the, the wizards, um, four gutter snipes, uh, four electric coils, I think is, the, is the, the O4 wall that does it, and then just a whole bunch of direct damage spells. It's amazing. Sure. And now this just got funny. Because I'm going to blanch wood my aggressive mammoth. I don't know that you can sustain damage that much, my friend. And if this is a traditional burn deck, it means that the spells that he has in his hand aren't sufficient enough to kill these big creatures. This is the reason why Modern Green Stompy, especially the early, early days of Guilds of Ravnica, like, is doing so well. You have a whole bunch of little spells that do a little bit of damage, and it can be annoying. Not nearly as annoying as this is. And they both have Trample. And I've got Titanic Growth sitting here. So that's a boatload of damage. Please don't quit. He's doing the math now. Can I survive? I don't think he can. Even if he blocks, I don't think he can. You're looking at 21 damage. He can stop four of it. But because it's amusing... Why not? <laughs> Oh, I love this deck. Especially if you are just now starting Magic Arena. This is the reason why I recommend this one. It's such a good deck. It plays so well. It plays very fast. It will... I mean, it does have some hard counters. And you'll get into those decks that are more constructed that will... That will that can beat the crap out of this deck. I'm not going to lie. But as a beginning... Oh, Fountain Renewal. As a beginning starter deck, it's fantastic. One more. I'll give you one more. Thesman Lord. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> the deck that just keeps on giving. Ooh, okay, we might be playing like we are is it maybe he's gonna kill my land of war, but he's probably got a shock in hand. Or a lightning strike or something crazy. Is it Drakes is probably the next deck I want to build. The counter burn is just too good. Banefire? You wasted a Banefire on a Land of War? Okay. Haha, -ha. joke's on you. 
Now you've got to spend a minimum of a lightning strike. So I've got the distinct feeling that he's got a counter. No, he does not have the counter in his hand. He doesn't have anything in his hand. He must not be. Oh, this is going to get funnier. Because the one thing that it just does is it doesn't put. I mean, unless you get. Um, I don't even know if. They do have the one dragon that kind of gets up there, but. They don't have very big creatures. Their whole their whole shtick is to be able to sit down and counter and burn you at the same time. And if that doesn't get running, you are in some trouble. You can have my 3-3, my good man. You're tapped out. It's a question. Of, yep, exactly. Now what I need is a mammoth. Gigantosaurus would be awesome. That is definitely a card that they don't have what it takes to deal with. Okay. So I'm probably going to rapid bite your 2-2. Because he's getting annoying. All of them. Actually, don't even need the mana production from her anymore. I can do more damage than you can. Burning Sun's avatar, very nice. Wonder where that's gonna go. No. Damn it, I had the. That was a misplay on my part. I had Verdant Rebirth in my hand. That was stupid. Fear my mana dork that is now bigger than your Burning Sun's avatar, by the way. It's a trade-off. You can attack me. I can attack you. Wonder what he's gonna pull. Probably Banefire. Ah, <gasps> no. Interesting. That's not what I pulled. I'd have pulled. I'd have pulled Banefire. Yeah, I really wish I had converted and rebirth that. That was a misplay. Maybe I'll get Galta. Rabbit might be nice too. <laughs> and on command, my dear, dear friend, Rabbit Bite. Yep. Be surprised how many times that card has saved my butt. Okay. That was an interesting choice. Ooh, we countered my mana dork. Oh no. He's using it for the surveil, is really what he's doing. Let's go one more turn. Okay. This is a pseudo. 
It's a pseudo. Is it Strakes? And Gutter Snipe. Good call. I like that card too. Where are all my big creatures? Like, honestly, let's take a look at this. No big creatures. None of them. They're all in the deck. I've got oodles of mana. Oh, dude. And this is where burn decks just fall down. Like, they just don't have the damage output to be able to kill a creature. And for some reason, all of his stuff seems to be... Yep. Very nice. Very well played. Very well played. Good game. Good game, good sir. All right, so it does give you an idea. Obviously, it was a little bit more of a refined deck error at the end. But in the end, obviously, the deck played very, very well. Um... Easily one of my favorite decks. Uh, if you want to look on improvements on this one, I will point you directly to my mono green Stompy deck on how to improve this deck. Some of the core of this is still there, but a lot of the common 1-1, one, 2-2 one, two, two creatures, the Vigilance, uh, those creatures are all tossed out for better, more uh, point-efficient creatures like Steel Leaf Champion. Um, you're looking at things like, well, here, let's just go to it. If we want to take a look at how I improved on that deck, because that is where I started. So how I improved upon that deck was to turn it into this monster. So you keep the Lunar War Elves, I ditched the Druids of the Cow, tossed in a couple of Pelt Collectors. Uh, Rabid Bites are still there, bump that up by one and add to Prey Upon. Uh, Blanchwood Armors are still there, you add one to that. And then this is where your three drops and four drops just completely get wiped out from that deck. Steel Leaf Champion, far more point efficient. Br Thrashing Breath of the Dawn, far more point efficient. Nullhide Ferox, far more point efficient. Vine Mare, far more point efficient. And you get the benefit of being car um, uh, Hexproof, Carnage Tyrant, and the Gulta stay in. So you have the, the, the skeleton of this deck starting there. And you can slowly build this up. Like a lot of this stuff here. So you've got the rares here, but you've got commons and uncommons that you can really build this up with slowly but surely. Vine Mares are uncommon. Carnage Tyrants are the Mythics, and that is going to cost you a little. But you've already got one Galta, and I think a second Galta, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go back in and take a look. In the other green-white deck, there was a Galta in that one. Or there was a Carnage Tyrant in one of these. Which one was it? Primal Fury. So if you get the other one, Carnage Tyrant already comes in on this one. So the free decks that you get, you've got Carnage Tyrant in here. Does it add anything else to this one? Uh, no, more Drew to the Cows, more Land of Wars. Nothing super special that adds into this particular deck, but there is an easy way to get your first Carnage Tyrant and your first Galta, and you just slowly start building up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please leave a comment down below if you would do it a little bit different or have a little bit more fun with it. Um, I do have a Patreon available, of course, if you are so inclined. That is patreon.com slash oldmangaming. Uh, and until next time, guys, we will see you in the arena.